So taking a look at number 10, so we have uh, sodium chloride and potassium chloride. Like today we were talking about? Hmm? Copper ones and today we were talking about? No. Mm -hmm. uh, no. I think right now I'm We have a mixture that contains sodium chloride and potassium chloride. And we're going to put that in water. And um, we're also going to add silver nitrate, excess silver nitrate. Is water taking place in the reaction? Water is, will just be the solvent, so it's not really going to participate in the reaction. And when we combine all of these things together, one thing that we get is the silver chloride precipitate. So okay. putting the mixture, the water, and the silver nitrate together is going to give us the silver chloride precipitate. Uh, and we know that this silver chloride precipitate has a mass of 8.5904 grams. We want to know the mass percent of sodium chloride in the mixture. All right, now, what would be really helpful here then is to know how many moles of sodium chloride we started with and how many moles of potassium chloride. Do you see that if we could just figure out how many moles of this we started with and how many moles of this we started with, we could then figure out the answer. If right. we knew how many moles of each of those we started with, we could then figure out what percent of the original was sodium chloride. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what we need to do is write a bunch of equations that have x and y in them. And if we get enough equations, we'll be able to solve for x and y. In fact, how many equations are we going to need to solve for x and y? Two, because we have two unknowns. So we need to write down two equations based on x and y, based on the information that we've been given. So we can get one of the equations out of the first sentence. Let's take a look at the first sentence and see what equation we can get about x and y from that. So, so x plus y equals 4. Not 4, yeah, moles. Well, not 4 grams. Yeah, we need to work on this some, because this is in moles and this is in grams. So that's a good starting point, but we need to work on this to get the units to work out. What do we need to put on, add to the left-hand side here? Oh, the... Um, Times one mole over how many grams? Um, NaCl. How many grams I have? Uh, 23 plus... Uh, um, 23 plus... 35, 25. So what number should I put up here? 77. Well, Wait, is for it, it'd be NaCl, not NaCl2, right? Yeah, just NaCl. So, so chlorine by itself is diatomic, but this is not a chlorine molecule. This is a, a ionic compound of sodium and chloride. So it contains one sodium and one chloride. <coughs> yeah, so what's going to be the molecular weight of sodium chloride? 58.45. Yeah, 58.45. All right, so depending on how you round that off, it'll be around 58.45. And that'll allow us to translate into grams, which is what we need. Out to be sorry. Uh, seventy-four point four five. Seventy-four point five five. Sorry. Point five five. Yeah. So here we have to find the molecular weight of potassium chloride, and we just look up the weights of potassium and chloride in the periodic tables. That was about thirty-nine plus thirty-five point four five to get this. Okay. Uh, now these moles will all cancel out, and we're going to end up with something that's in grams. So that will tell us the total grams of the mixture, which they told us here was. 
four grams. So this equation comes out to be 58.45x plus 74 plus 55y equals 4. Does that look right? Okay. Well, that's some good progress, but we still need another equation. We have two unknowns, we only have one equation, so now we have to look at some other sentences here and see if we can squeeze out one more equation about x and y. All right. Um, Yeah, we're going to have to use the sodium chloride. How can we get another equation about x and y using this information about the sodium chloride? Then you have like conservation of mass. Yeah, we're going to use conservation. Well, one thing that will be useful here is to put this into moles. When in doubt, it's a good idea to put things into moles since x and y are in moles. We know that we got 8.59 grams of silver chloride, but let's figure out how many moles of silver chloride that is. So what calculation do we have to do to convert this into moles? Um, just go, mm, Times one mass. mole over um, 143.32. 143.32. <coughs> so here we use the molecular weight of silver chloride, looking at those weights for silver and chloride in the periodic table, 107.87 plus 35.45. That will cancel out these grams of silver chloride, and that will tell us, let's do the calculation. Oh. 0.06. We get approximately 0.06 moles of silver chloride. Good. So after um, there's going to be 0.06 moles of silver chloride in this precipitate. That's right. Okay, and it turns out here that it doesn't help too much to focus on the silver because there was no silver over here. What we want to know is actually how many how much chloride there is in the precipitate. Well, if we have 0.06 moles of silver chloride, how many moles of actual chlorine atoms would that be? Well, you have to convert it. You go from, uh, so then you multiply it times one mole of Cl over one mole of AgCl. Right. So that would convert it into Cl, and then into chlorine. So you have 0.06 moles of chlorine. Yes, that's a very easy conversion. Every one mole of silver chloride contains one mole of chlorine atoms. So there's a one-to-one -one conversion ratio. So that tells us that we also ended up with 0.06 moles of chlorine atoms. All right, now we're just about ready to set up a new equation that involves x and y. What's our new equation now that involves x and y? Um, it, and this. Wouldn't it be... Wouldn't it be, um, I'm sorry, wouldn't it be x minus um, 0.06 plus y minus 0.06, I don't know, never mind. So where did these chlorine atoms come from? From, from both. They came from the sodium chloride and potassium chloride. Yeah. And now we can use the conservation idea. All of the chlorine from here and all of the chlorine from here has turned into this chlorine. So what's the relationship between x, y, and 0.06? Yeah, x plus y equals 0.06. Yeah, there's that simple that relationship. How do I know that all of these two substances is going to end up reacting? And because turning... have, because um, AgCl is the only um, so no product of chlorine. Yeah, chlorine. Um, there's a particular word here that tells us that we're, that we're going to use up all of those starting materials, though. 
what's the what's the word that tells us that we're going to be used when we combine the sodium chloride, the potassium chloride, and the silver nitrate? We're going to use up all of the sodium chloride and potassium chloride. The excess. Yeah. The, excess. the key is they told us there's excess silver nitrate. That means there's enough silver to react with all of these chlorides and enough silver to react with all of these chlorides and still have extra silver left over. So this word excess here is a key word. That's how we know that we're using all of these chlorines are going into the silver chloride over here. We have enough of this to react with all of the other starting materials. That's what it means that this is an excess.